I'll attempt you for the rest of Excellent. So, second time's the charm. Great. So, yeah, you can tell us about your work. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Almost. It's about, it's been a brief moment. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm Dana, and uh, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the blended matching problem. This is joint work with the Jianjing and my advisors, Li Hong Wu and Jia Ming Shen. So, um, to start, let's consider a very simple match problem. So uh, suppose you have a bipartite graph. It is a complete vertical graph where, um, so you have n vertices to the left and n vertices to the right, and the graph contains all n squared edges. And suppose there are edge weights or costs associated with each edge, and these edge weights are distributed by the exponential. So the question is, uh, what is the cost of the minimum weight matching? So in reality, you can think of uh, one side of the vertices representing workers, the other side representing tasks, and there are costs associated with assigning a worker to a task. And therefore, um, we want to study okay, what is the optimal cost. And despite this problem being so simple to state, it actually turned out to be quite a challenging mathematical problem. And it has been attacked by a line of researchers and. Um, it only gave up persistence uh, in 2001, where Aldous proved rigorously that um, the expected weight of the minimum weight matching actually as n goes to infinity converges to a fixed limit of pi squared over six. So it's this really beautiful result. And it was also shown later rigorously that um, um, for finite n, this uh, expected weight of the minimum weight matching is exactly the partial sum of um, the one over i square series. Now let's jump to the more recent timeline where a planted version of this problem was considered. So under this planted version, you assume that there is actually a true perfect matching that is planted in the graph and it's considered the ground truth. And uh, the model assumes that there are these uh, two edges and um, all those uh, spurious fake edges and the edge weights for the two and the fake edges, they're exponential, but with different rates. Now, when there is an underlying truth planted, but unknown, then uh, you have uh, some uh, natural statistical inference problems that arise, which is how well can you recover the planted unknown matching. And, um, um, a natural solution is to consider, okay, what is the uh, minimum um, weight matching uh, estimator m hat? How does it perform statistically under this planted model? And this problem was studied earlier by uh, Mohrami, Moore, and Xu, where they showed that um, the sharp statistical limit happens uh, at lambda equals four, exactly. So that means when lambda is smaller than four, you have a uh, um, the minimum weight matching has to suffer a constant fraction of um, edge errors. And when lambda is larger than four, the error goes to zero. So now with the minimum weight matching cleanly analyzed, uh, na natural next step is to ask, okay, can we do better statistically than the minimum weight matching? And uh, the answer is actually you cannot do better. So the min minimal weight matching is statistically optimal. And this is answered in uh, our paper this year. And we show that lambda equals four is indeed the sharp statistical threshold for recovery. And um, in fact, we uh, in our analysis, we're no longer restricted to considering only 
exponential edge weights. Instead, we can allow the true edge weights and uh, the fake edge weights to follow arbitrary distributions P and Q. And uh, we not only consider um, the complete graphs, um, but we actually consider also uh, sparse graphs as well by assuming that the edges, um, the fake edges, they only appear with probability D over N, where D can be as small as a constant, which corresponds to the sparse graphs. And it can be as large as all the way up to N, which corresponds to complete graphs. And we show that the statistical limit for the recovery problem here depends only on the average degree D and uh, the Bhattacharya coefficient, um, also known as the Hellinger affinity between P and Q. And in the special case where the edge weights are exponential and you have a complete graph, this statistical limit um, collapses to lambda equals four, which is attained by the minimal weight matching. Moreover, we also show that near this statistical limit, so when lambda is uh, equal to four minus some small epsilon, we're able to characterize the average weight of the minimum, uh, sorry, the average proportion of mismatched edges to be um, uh, scaling as e to the minus some small constant um, divided by square epsilon, which shows that the phase transition here is infinitely smooth. Now, so this result, um, in a way, it more or less uh, gives a complete answer to the sharp threshold for the recovery problem under the planted matching model, um, which makes me happy. However, <laughs> uh, more importantly, I really think uh, what interests me most is uh, the proof strategies that are um, associated with this type of problems. And in fact, when analyzing or when trying to obtain, with the, obtain this result first, um, we try some more conventional methods, including the second moment method and also with discharge arguments. And all these methods, in the end, they um, ended up failing for us. And here is sort of a cartoon explaining um, the challenge in the analysis. Basically, to obtain the sharp statistical limit, you are forced to look at the posterior distribution. In particular, you must look at what is the um, posterior mass of um, those uh, matchings that are a fair distance away from the shoes. And because those matchings, um, they potentially share a large number of edges, and the interactions amongst them ended up being uh, just overwhelming for us. And that means we had to develop some new proof strategies in order to obtain a um, sharp analysis on the posterior distribution. Now, um, I would like to take a step back from here. Um, so um, as a lot of you know, there are actually a lot of other planted problems that are like this. Um, and the common theme of these problems is really there's um, so the true hidden signal um, does not is not really represented by some low rank structure, and that means you cannot rely on some more traditional methods like um, spectral analysis or SDP relaxation, and this really brings in uh, some new challenges in both statistical analysis and algorithmic design, and really. I feel like that's a good thing because it leaves a lot of room for researchers to come up with our own um, new proof strategies. And uh, another thing I like about this type of problem is it's usually proved by pictures combined with the uh, combinatorial arguments. So overall, it's just a really fun playground to be in. Uh, finally, I would like to just uh, uh, make a short comment about the computational gaps. So for this particular problem, uh, there is actually no computational gap um, because we know that the sharp threshold is attained by the minimal weight matching. Uh, it can be uh, found via the Hungarian algorithm in polynomial time. Uh, however, this is not true for um, a lot of the other planted problems listed. And uh, for a lot of those problems, there are conjectured computational gaps. And uh, it is um, still largely unknown how to show those conjecture computational gaps. And that's what I'm here to learn. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't looked at that problem closely. Yeah, uh, I, I think some of our analysis techniques, they may be applied to the detection problem, but at the moment, I can't tell you what's the detection answer. So. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Unavoidably touched the mic from over and over again. Uh, I can't see you, so I'll do it again. Switch to the doctor here. Yeah. 